Hey everyone, it's Lance. So, we're in 2015. By now, we all thought we'd have those flying cars, right? Um, unfortunately, we do not. However, we have that fake, uh, crappy Ondo board or whatever the hell it is, uh, Henderson, whatever, where basically everybody in the media was invited to test these wannabe hoverboards, right? From Back to the Future. Now, not only are these things massive, however, they basically don't work. Let's be honest here. It's basically a heavy-duty magnet pushing down. Now, maybe the technology is a little more intense. Okay, fine. I'll give you that. More scientific? Fine. However, we're not paving the streets with this shit, right? There's no way in hell. Uh, unless they get some kind of subsidy and maybe they make a cheaper wheelchair to pop people on and <laughs> toss them down the street, right? But the truth is... Um, it's not happening anytime soon, unless they took that type of material and made a way to, ah, I'm not even going to bother on that subject. However, what I am going to do is say another year and another strike in the calendar for Windows Phone. We were so close to being more and more popular for everybody, right? We have these gigantic, uh, phablets. I hate that word, but the phablet phone. I have the Nokia, or I guess soon it will be the Windows, or Microsoft, uh, Windows Phone, which I think that name, and the new little look, if you've seen the leaks, it looks awful. And according to my animal that is barking down a couple floors, um, he himself is not thrilled with this either. It looks like crap. Um, hopefully they will come out with something different, and what we've seen so far is just a prototype. I do hope that is the facts. Now, I do think, again, it was the year of the Windows Phone, even though I think I've said that year in year in and the reason being is i've seen it more on television i've seen more people using it i've seen more people saying in uh tech blogs and whatnot saying you have your ios you have your android and your windows phone they're no longer saying that blackberry crap which blackberry is now something that you say it you know your tongue starts swelling and you go into a cold sweat, right? You're just embarrassed that you even managed to say that and feel so irrelevant. Um, but, uh, yeah, I digress. So, this year, 2015, what do we really expect? We expect people to realize Tor is not something that's good. Uh, even though I've made videos in the past showing people how to use the Tor network, however, because it's become a little even more mainstream, you know, I think the certain three-letter uh, character government agencies are now uh, making more exit nodes than ever. Now you might say, well, how can I use Tor if I have no choice? Well, I would get yourself a VPN and go into Tor, and then from Tor go into an exit node that's a VPN as well. You know, force yourself. Um, but even then, are you really safe? Because that last VPN has to be sort of untraceable, so to speak. Anyways, I'm not giving you influence on what you should do or should not do. I do believe that anything we visit should be uh, private unless we have our lines uh, tapped. And as an American, I would assume that would be done by, uh, you know, the legal ways. Having a piece of paper called a warrant issued by a judge, not a secret judge, if a judge even exists with a little rubber stamp that says approved by an agency that permits the, a court that doesn't sort of exist with a piece of paper that you would receive that doesn't sort of exist, and if it does exist and you speak of it existing, you are fucked. Um, again, just hopefully more privacy uh, tools will come out that we're just not thinking of to uh, work properly. And as you know, about, what, a year or so ago, I made the thing for people in Turkey so they, they could do encrypted video chat and text chat. Um, Mr. Dot Com, uh, Kim, uh, originally was looking into that, and then he flopped out. And what do you know, now Mega is doing encrypted video chat. Gee, when I created versethewebcom and I had that out there a while ago, uh, people didn't see the need for it. But now more and more people are seeing the need for it. Um, but now you have people like uh, Mark Cuban coming out with something like Cyberdust. Um, now I've had a private message with him a couple times in uh, Twitter, and I've mentioned to him uh, that there's things that he could do for his app to make it so it's less likely that people could just copy and paste things that 
people are typing um, and now you know things like snapchat where people can take a phone on top of your phone and record something you know instead of you know getting caught that you took a screenshot ooh you got caught taking a screenshot great uh it went and told the person yeah most likely they're not going to give a shit if they're the ones sending it to you i mean you're an idiot if you sent somebody something and uh you thought there was no way somebody would know. The moment you take a picture, even if you just keep it on your phone, assume that is viewable by everybody. Don't be fooled. I don't care who you think you are. Just take that photo. You don't know who has access to that photo. The, right now, me filming. I don't know if somebody is also watching this as I'm doing it, or recording me, or recording me right from my fucking phone. That's how scary... 2015 is i don't think any of us saw this coming nonetheless it's here what are we going to do about it well it seems more people have kind of died down since the original snowden leaks which doesn't matter what side of the fence you're on um you would assume a certain somebody who went in front of uh let's just say the government to testify not wittingly of course um I thought it's if you lie in court, you get in trouble. But apparently only those in power can lie in court. Now, if you and I lied in court, ooh, boy, they hang us by the noose, right? Right. But, you know, enough sad news of the past, right? Now we look on to the future. Progress, right? So we know while we're kind of on the topic of Microsoft, which, to be fair, Microsoft has pushed against that three-character uh, uh, organization that wants information from another country uh, where that server is, and Microsoft basically said, no. However, we said, yeah, that's not the ticket, boy. And sure enough, we're strong-arming them, and they're going to get the data one way or the other. Um, however, at least Microsoft looks, you know, like they're in our good graces, so to speak. Um, but corporations are corporations. If they truly wanted to, they'd do something, which our government doesn't realize. They are making us tech people in America look like shit. They don't trust us. They don't want our cloud services. They don't want shit from us, okay? So we're in trouble, and they're just making it worse. It's almost like when you watch those evil movies, you know, communism you see uh you know the chinese movies where oh i'm not gonna get into it but that's what it's gonna happen and then we're gonna look back and go god we were so smart how did we not stop it guess we're not really too smart now are we now i know this is going on about eight minutes now of a badass rant but uh i apologize uh but back again to the microsoft thing for the last time as we all know and love to hate Internet Explorer. It, to be fair, Internet Explorer for Windows 8 did change a bit, uh, especially for touch where you could slide like that or slide like that. And uh, yeah, however, Internet Explorer is taking the back road in Windows 10. That, well, not the one that you probably have right now on your computer if you're part of that beta. The one that's going to be coming out with uh, a browser that, well, is a fork of Trident. And... Uh, the good news about that is, well, it'll also be backwards compatible with those uh, IE uh, sites that need, you know, like ActiveX or have the specific uh, Windows uh, uh, Internet Explorer encoding, uh, which by encoding, I mean code, uh, HTML code. If you look at a lot of websites, you have your web kit and then you have to put in code that will actually work with certain browsers of Internet Explorer, a backwards compatibility, which we're already kind of used to. So... Hopefully, Microsoft will figure out a way that us web developers, uh, front-end web developers, don't have to worry about that. Uh, and we could take that crap out of our code, and hopefully that they will find a way, even though they're not utilizing WebKit in uh, the new browser that's coming out. Um, I don't know how they're going to make it work out, but um, yeah, uh, <laughs> it, it just... It kind of baffles me that uh, Spartan is what they're calling it right now. I don't know if that's because there's Chrome, there's Firefox, and things like that. I mean, they're driving my dogs wild. You've heard, right? All this Microsoft news 
is making my dogs go crazy. Um, but nonetheless, so hopefully we'll also see more of the um, artificial intelligence. And when I say this, I'm not just saying for our personal AI drones, right? I make a few of them. You've seen some of them on my blogs or some of the events that I've gone to, you've seen me do. Um, a lot of times you've seen me, um, pardon me for looking, but I'm looking for uh, one of my uh, hand uh, uh, controllers that I've made so that you can control. Uh, this one was for uh, women. Uh, as you see, uh, you have that right in there, that right there. Uh, yes, it is a, a dog collar, a female dog collar. However, that little sucker right in there, if you can get in there, uh, uses my flexible uh, flexible board um, and basically that sucker right there allows you to control uh, one of my drones remotely so making the barrier to learn how to fly a drone a lot easier now what I've done also is well not the one that I'm going to show you but making it so that it, it can go on a finger and that would be the, your speed so not only are you going left right up down etc or turning if you want to flip it but if you put your finger forward it's going faster go backwards it's almost to the stopping point um you'll see those drones coming out uh we're using things like this these little uh microcontrollers i mean not microcontrollers uh microprocessors um that uh a bunch of them you'll see how cool things are going to be coming into 2015 because I will start uh, selling stuff on wearingdigital.com finally. Uh, a lot of times people ask me where can they buy the things that I'm you know creating as a hobby. Normally I don't have an answer. Um, so now I will. Uh, hopefully you'll utilize it especially since they'll be open in the sense that you can modify the code the way you want. You can add on to it. In fact I encourage you to do it. Um, in fact I encourage you to sell the add-ons if it even becomes popular and when popular I mean you know the few of us that might actually want to do something cool with this stuff but back to uh, artificial intelligence and as you hear my dog is thrilled about artificial intelligence he's howling about it literally uh, he's barking up a storm and the reason for that is because I've been working on something that's an emotion and feeling API which will allow websites bloggers if you're a blogger great I'd love to speak with you and uh, see if you utilize my uh, API coming up and basically what that is is you ever go on a website and you know you're in a decent mood and then BAM five killed and blah 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 crash or this or this is gone well imagine if you didn't have to necessarily see those sad posts early in the morning what if you could just schedule them for after 12 o'clock or something or maybe not at all or what if you can view content based off of the feeling or the emotion of what was written uh, so that's what I'm writing but now there's a bigger part to that right it's not just for it to recognize websites and learn uh, what people are basically saying typing from social media to blog sites to media sites etc and then in general uh, understand what's going on in certain regions areas and see how sad certain areas are happy or whatever uh, origins are but it goes even beyond that the idea is to hopefully harness that power and recognition and put it into wearables now you might be asking how do you put that into wearables right well the idea is to monitor your person right and so from there let's say you have somebody mentally ill or something like that or possible personality uh, issues you'd be able to figure out when that new personality uh, kicked in or you'd be able to tell if you've turned into a dog that can't shut the fuck up um, or other things of the sort so this way we can kind of monitor you so you walk into your house from your car and when you get there a vanilla scent is lifted into your air you know it recognizes that you're stressed out maybe your favorite songs are going on right who knows what the case may be we just don't know uh, and there's so many possibilities so many things I hope to get out there this year for you uh, as I do work full time doing other things and a lot of uh, side work uh, we'll see where, how that goes, but uh, we're almost 15 minutes into it. I just really wanted to also thank everybody who's been watching my videos, uh, who's been replying to me, uh, coming to my website. I know I haven't been producing a lot lately. I am busy doing stuff, and I can't wait to show a lot of you guys. Uh, for instance, this little guy right here, which is a 3D printed bracelet, right? 
but it's much more than a bracelet. Within here, you can't tell. Let's see where the little part is. It here we go. See, like right there, that little guy right there is actually uh, an RFID. Uh, it's soon to be replaced with the little NFC chip, and the idea behind that is, well, you'll see. The future of RFID, NFC, and Bluetooth and your phone and passwords are going to change. Uh, now I know Apple Pay is coming up. Um, we all knew Apple was going to do NFC. We all knew it. Uh, they didn't really have a choice. Uh, Bluetooth LE uh, kind of flopped in my book. Yeah, it's okay for these wearables and shit, but let's be honest, it's nothing compared to what we can do with the NFC for specific things. Now, obviously, if you need a low-level thing constantly sending information back, BLE obviously is the choice because that's what it's doing. I mean, you're not constantly tapping an NFC uh, uh, thing right there, right? Uh, chip. So, with that being said, and my dog not shutting up, hopefully this comes out okay. Um, if not, I'm not going to re record it. We're 16 minutes in. We're in 2015. Let's hopefully make it count. And uh, yeah, we'll see you shortly.